Hey everyone, Brian Von Vier here, back at it again. We've got a little bit of a funny one this time. Rogue players. What's the most flamboyant and arrogant rogue you've ever made? What equipment did they use, and if they died, how so? Part 1. My only time playing a rogue ended up with him getting cut in half, somehow living, then getting murdered in his sleep for getting all the glory as he was the only one people thought lived. The other players were jealous of his riches. I've played a couple of rogues in 5th edition. Lana was a circus acrobat, thief rogue with hunter ranger and equal levels of both. His main thing was climbing stuff and putting on a show. He did have bright colored stuff and was a bit of an ass. I tried to describe how he would jump around a bit in combat and the acrobatic flexibility when dashing as a bonus action. I started to develop Basil, or Basil, an arcane trickster. She only got to level 3 before the game stopped. Not anyone's fault, life happened. She was a 13-year-old kid who wanted to make a bit of an impact somehow, was a bit of a kleptomaniac, and wanted to be liked by elves. So she tried to get the elves in the party to like her. I don't really play flamboyant or arrogant rogues, but I am playing a rogue paladin who's like <laughs> the daddest dad to ever dad. He adopts everybody, he packs extra rations, and I use downtime to make jams and honey to give to the other party members. When I do compelled duel, I make a dad joke. I made a guy who was a soldier, but tripped on a rock in his first battle and gouged his eyes out. Now he makes a living as a dashing mercenary rogue and bumbles about not trying to fall into traps and enemies. He hates gnomes and those weird knife-eared fox because they've ripped him off and added to his delusions with their odd blasphemous magics. It's great because the party I'm in is a bunch of like super radical internet warriors who don't seem to really get my sarcasm. Originally the in-game racism was a joke, but I made it canon just to piss them off a little and mess with the game. Needless to say, I've been team killed a couple times now. Ironically, I'm one of the best fighters on the team, and I've saved the party a few times. Our game is super casual, and every character in the party has quirks like mine, so everyone bitches at each other, and it's a ton of fun. Reginald Archibald Philip III. He was the third son of a king. His brothers were Reginald Archibald Philip I and II. He was very, very, very into poisons. He was the face of the party and would frequently have drinks with either contacts or enemies. And through a stupidly high sleight of hand skill, he would poison them. He did die after a governing warlord figured out he'd been poisoned and chased him out of the castle, the fifth floor of the castle. Reggie was alone and the dice gods did not smile favorably on those death saves. I played a great mastermind rogue a while back, Lumi, traveling bard. As an Eladrin, he excelled at being flamboyant and putting on a good show while quietly pickpocketing patrons and generally pulling pranks and quickly moving from town to town. An absolute joy to play, expertise and deception is so much fun. Last scene. Faye stepping out of a window to make an escape with most of the loot during a one shot. Would never do that in a real campaign, but it was a fun end for that game. I made a rogue character that I just absolutely adore playing. They were the first character I ever made for Dungeons and Dragons, actually. Their name is Nyrobe, and they are a changeling rogue with the swashbuckler archetype. They identify as non-binary and hit on basically any NPC the DM deemed as hot. Over dramatic and very out there, roleplay is so much fun with this character. I gave them a rapier and a set of throwing knives that did hell of damage when sneak attack was applied. Later in the campaign, they also got the hang of some levitating boots. When I first wrote up Nyrobe, they weren't very immersed into the world with the backstory I gave them, but after reworking it and giving the character more depth, it just made me fall in love with them even more. Drawing more inspiration from the swashbuckler archetype definitely helped with that. I still play Nyrobe to this day, and I probably will until their inevitable death. I think I got a guy. His name was Beiru, and he was a very troubled elf. 
Due to homebrew elf cultures, he wears a mask. It's gray and mostly featureless, with the exception of a massive crack in it stemming from his left eye, which was basically not accounted for in the mask. Under normal conditions, he is a posh, polite gentleman who is kind and somewhat arrogant. Again, due to homebrew elf culture, masks are like underwear for elves. You gotta have one to be treated normally, with a knack for stealing anything that is remotely magical and ignoring just about everything else. Oh, and he flirts, but won't seduce. He waits for people to seduce him. In combat, he is reserved and cautious, until the mask breaks. When the mask breaks, he has a smile glued to his face, and he immediately undertakes a mental break, fracturing his very identity. He is seriously intimidating, is passively intimidating everything, and any attempts to alter his mind immediately fail. Reading his mind in this state yields nothing. In this kind of mental insanity, he picks a random target, and that foe becomes his obsession. Which means as long as that guy is alive, he will hunt him down, ruthlessly, efficiently, and with cold, merciless murder in his eyes. He takes nothing, cares about nothing else, and even if he is on his last breath, he will f***ing charge that obsession with no hesitation. He returns to normal once his obsession dies. These events haunt him. And he was also an arcane trickster and he took the wild magic flaw so that his insanity shit could be allowed. His magic always goes wild when maskless. He managed to single-handedly stop a cult by himself when one of the cultists broke his mask and he set the cult leader as his obsession. About 20 surges of wild magic later, the entire place was on fire, floating, blown up, flooded, and had about five dragons flying around. And he was in the middle of it, radiating lightning that summons wild demons. DM fucking turned him into an encounter. He died way later than he should have when he became obsessed with a Demi-Lich and sent its entire lair into the middle of hell. Demi-Lich died too since his philatrophy was also crushed. I played a rogue once. A warforged dressed up as a dragonborn. Uh, it's a campaign detail, don't worry about it. Who wanted to sail the seas and was a bit more grounded, is very much leaning on that swashbuckling nature. They wanted a boat and flaunt it, swinging their rapier around. Even got a tiny warforged that looked like him. The character had to retire because the remaining two people were a wizard and warlock, and ho ho, you do not want to have your frontliner be a half-baked rogue when the GM is a murderer, ho ho ho, and what a time to flee. Surrounded by several demons of CR matching APL and higher, the whiz kids at half or below, the freshly recruited melee boy down and out in another room, and the only reason anyone lived was a wand of wonder triggering all remaining charges and not killing everyone. My rogue had to run away by then, assuming everyone else would too, which is a shame. We got a cool boat one session later. I played a mastermind rogue with performance and high charisma. Convinced the party I was a variant bard. Never jumped into combat due to being relatively squishy, due to a low con, and using my mastermind powers to buff the party and give advantage. The few times I fought with the party, I did it sneakily and deliberately avoided sneak attacks. Not what I had wanted to do at the start, but the ruse had been going so long, I was just curious how long I could keep it going. Eventually, we get into a fight with a weird mutated illithid. It used weird mind control to read the party's minds and lock us in illusions. However, masterminds have this cool little ability where they are immune to mind reading, and they can produce false feedback. I managed to use this to escape. The party watched me drop 200 feet off of a cliff, using a homebrew rule about attacking from high ground and doing damage equal to the fall damage if I succeeded in an acrobatics check, as well as a sneak attack to skewer this mutated SOB in three rounds. Some players were mad, most were chill about it. It may seem weird that they didn't pick up on it, but they were all relatively new. I always played music, seduced, was the happy-go-lucky antithesis to the edgelord rogue, and wore crazy flamboyant outfits. The game was heavily homebrewed, and other than those few moments wasn't the best. It was pretty silly, so nobody questioned much. We also had a half-dragon lowly, a young elder god druid of the mood, and a human fighter who tattooed weapons on his body and could summon them anime style. All in all, I was the most mundane. My current player is a half-elf rogue. 
He's got a lot of interesting stuff. He's a pyromaniac and knows several fire-related spells. He managed to kill several people by using mage hands. He is a raging alcoholic and has passed out drunk several times. He's also very prideful with awful impulse control. This personality has gotten him almost killed at least five times in six sessions, three of those times by his own party. Also, his father is the Lord of the Fifth Circle of Hell. So in conclusion, imagine a chaotic evil, alcoholic Pyro Star-Lord, for the lack of a better term. The rogue lock I'm playing right now is a merchant's son, who has a chip on his shoulder because he feels like he doesn't compare to the prized son or daughter. He ended up making a deal with a patron to gain power. One of the other PCs is literally a babysitter hired by my partners. He's a spoiled edgelord, but he'll learn his lesson eventually. As for weapons and abilities, he uses two rapiers, one being his packed weapon. Dual wielder, warcaster feats, v-human, I'm level 5. Rogue 2, Warlock 3, the plan is Rogue X from here. I also took the armor as one of my invocations, so he has an 18 as his AC when I use it. Then I got Hex, which lets me do an extra 1d6 on top of my sneak attack on top of two times attacking. Overall, it's a very fun and high damage character, especially for level 4. I think eventually I'll fall behind the Monk and Paladin, which will be humbling for him, and become more of a team player. I played a multi-class rogue character once in a high-level campaign that I still miss. She was a half-elf, part battlemaster fighter, part swashbuckler rogue, part lore bard, and all pirate. She was brash and bold and loud, a commanding presence on the battlefield thanks to almost always doing sneak attack damage and that awesome commander's strike directed at the barbarian friend with the ridiculous sword, and the only party member with any heal or buff spells, if I remember correctly. She was a disgraced former privateer captain who was only in this land-based adventuring lark to raise money to rebuild her ship so she could get back on the water, but had charisma and confidence oozing out of every pore and ended up being elected party leader, which was huge for me as a relatively new player. <laughs> she double-wielded a rapier and a whip and managed to tame a displacer beast who did twice as much damage as she did on a regular basis, so they were quite the imposing team. They'd flank enemies and just rip them apart between them. I miss being her. We never got to the final demonomah of the campaign because our DM joined the military and left. But by the time we disbanded, she had indeed managed to save up enough for a decent ship. So, in my mind, she's still out there somewhere on the sea. Her giant fey cat paddling menacingly at her side, roaring orders to her new pirate crew from the helm of the Unsully Court. Don McGiggles, Rogue. Backstory is he was a voyeur and professional peeping Tom, hence why he was so sneaky. He was quite the seducer considering his negative four charisma. Didn't matter if you were human, orc, halfling, etc. He would definitely try to seduce you. Imagine how well that works with the former modifier. Don was always the black sheep of the family. He always loathed his brother Ron McGiggles. He was a politician and a damn good one at that. Ron had enough charisma that he could just look in someone's direction and get them to vote and subsequently sleep with him. But why does that matter? It's because it leads to Don's most incredible feat. Don was spying on a camp of three orcs who were guarding the front of a cave. His group thought of just beating through the brutes and entering the cave. But instead, Don ran out and began to seduce every single orc in that camp, leaving enough time for his group to go through the cave. And that's the story about how my negative four charisma rogue beat off three orcs instead of his group beating through them. Hey everyone, Brian here checking in after the vid. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell to get notified when we post or go live. Do you have a story you'd like to share with us? Do so on the subreddit, r slash Mr. Ripper, where you can submit whatever story comes to your heart. And make sure to follow us on Twitter and Twitch. Links are in the description below. Using a help action, you can follow me, Brian Von VA, on YouTube, where I stream games and make voice acting memes. As always, I try to end my videos on a positive, and I just want to say one thing to follow up what I've said before in the past. Do what you gotta do. Make yourself happy. You're going to crack some eggs, you're going to stomp on some fucking walnuts on the way, but hey, if you make it, you make it. Don't you ever quit on what makes you happy. Even if you have to become the enemy of your entire friend group and family, I know that you can be a good person and still do what you got to do. Be happy out there. Live your life. You have a finite time to do it. You might as well smile instead of frowning all the time, right? So get up off your butt, be happy, hydrate, and stay healthy out there. All the love, I'll see you next time, bye for now.